Welcome to episode four. Thanks for joining me back again. Uh, on this episode, I'm gonna be working on the solar panels as well as I'm upgrading the batteries to lithium batteries. That's what most of the episode is going to be about. Um, it's a little bit of a longer one. I still have lots of projects that I'm working on and uh, the next few videos are still going to be just catching up on a lot of projects that I'm working on. You can tell by my hair that it's not <laughs> the same as in the videos because it, it is about a month or two ago that uh, the videos themselves were shot. Um, but yeah, enjoy. So I'm working on my solar panel installation. Uh, there are two panels here. They're uh, 200 watts each, so of course 400 watts. I'm going to be putting them on these rear rails. I have some uh, mounting hardware that I'm going to need to uh, put onto the solar panels and that will allow the panels to sit flat and then there will be an extension pole that will pivot them out whenever we actually uh, need them. There will be one on this side and one on that side. And this is actually what I'm working on now is where the wiring is going to go down through the hull. Step down here. There was this old GPS antenna that was uh, bolted onto the side of the stanchion. So I removed the stanchion and down here at the base I can see where that old wire goes. Down in the boat there's uh, the wire just cut, it's not doing anything at all. From underneath uh, there's a cabinet in the master stateroom where this hole actually comes out. So I fed through a uh, electrician's fishing tape. And so it's just a, a metal piece that will be able to then run the solar panel wiring through the stanchion itself. It'll come uh, entering through here, down through the tube itself, and then um, I'll recock all of this. When I took this one off, I realized that there is uh, very little, uh, these have not been rebed in many, many years. There is a little bit of wetness that I detected underneath. So. I'll of course rebed this one and make sure it is nice and watertight, but that means I should do all of them. So all around the boat, there's going to be about eight more of these that I'm going to need to do. So little by little, all of these are going to need to get done. Fortunately, the ones uh, uh, towards the front of the boat uh, that are right on the deck itself have already been done when the deck was removed a few years ago. So those at least I don't have to do. Here in the aft stateroom, in this cabinet. This is where you look up underneath. That's where that uh, old GPS line here exits. And so then I put that uh, electrician's fish, fish tape up in this direction. As you can see, I need to do a lot of cleaning in here as well because it looks like uh, there has been moisture over time. So I, uh, it's why I need to get those all rebed because that's the only place that water could uh, intra from. So I was able to get the uh, solar wire actually through the stanchion. I was able actually to force it down uh, directly without having to get a, a messenger line through. Actually, the messenger line broke off. Um, but I'm able to feed it through here. But in order to feed it through, I need to uncoil the line. So I jury-rigged a little line roll. Uh, this is actually a piece from what used to be some sort of a barbecue stand that was on the stanchion on the uh, starboard side. So I hacked that so I could uh, make a little line reel, make it a little easier for myself. It was a really blustery day, so it was a great time actually to make cookies. The boat already came with uh, three solar panels mounted right there on top of the Dodger cover. I'm going to have a, a whole new Dodger made. And then I've got two new panels, one of them being right here. And I'm just going to be installing some brackets. So first I'm going to be putting in some aluminum cross pieces. As you can see, I'm drilling that here. Then I'm going to be uh, adding these mounts to those rails. You can see by something like that. And then that will allow them to swing up. And then I'm going to work on a, uh, a brace bar that is going to uh, attach somewhere in the middle here and be pushed out from the lower uh, stanchion pole. So hopefully that will uh, add the support needed to keep them uh, up in their operating position when needed. Plus I'm gonna have a banana. I wanted to install one cross piece uh, first so I can mark exactly where I'm going to want the uh, 
mounts to go. Once I've figured that out, then I can use this as a template and uh, uh, do all the drilling back on the board. It's just going to make things a little bit easier. So I already have my flat bar stock. I have the uh, rail mounts already mounted on there. I had to do them from behind, so I had to do that part first before I get them in there. Otherwise, there'd be no way to get the screws in from underneath. So I just need to uh, drill these holes in and put the fasteners in, and then uh, this panel's ready for putting up on the board. Let's see what the morning brings us. Oh, nice. Good morning, San Diego. So I am back fighting with my old nemesis again. The engine still isn't working. I uh, had a uh, mechanic come out last week um, and he had suggested that possibly the glow plugs is what the issue is, that it's just not getting enough heat to initially start. So I ordered some new ones. I got a pack of four shipped. And so I need to take those ones out and hopefully that uh, does the trick. I'm also going to check the uh, the old ones with an ohm meter um, and check the resistance and that might tell me if that was the issue or not or if I'm just uh, chasing ghosts at the moment. Yeah, wish me luck. So I had a heck of a lot time trying to get the uh, old glow plugs out. Um, I ended up having to uh, remove the injectors in order to be able to get uh, access to, to one of them. I have a shitty job to tackle today as uh, my uh, toilet crapped out on me. The uh, handle's frozen, uh, seized up. Most likely I need to get some parts in here. Reality is though, I really want a composting toilet anyway, so I have one of those in order. So I'm going to take this one apart and get ready for the install of the composting one. Uh, down under here is where things get kind of nasty. And yes, those white hoses are going to be full. So this is going to be a very ugly job. To say the least, I'm going to have a long shower after this one. Well, that's advantageous. Well, that didn't end up as horrible as I kind of thought. Um, I ended up being able to fix the toilet. Looks like there was a bunch of calcium buildup in some of the lines. There's actually a kink in one of the hoses. Right. Open this up here. Right down there. Got some more light on there for you. Right down there, there's a kink. And I believe that was all filled up with calcium. I was able to uh, unclog it and uh, get the toilet working again. I still have the composting toilet on the way uh, and that's perfectly fine. I still want to change that. I want to get rid of having hoses and holes in the boat and uh, the black water tank, the whole mess of it. Uh, I've already had several problems with the toilet and I've only been on here, what, a month and a half? So that will fix a lot of problems. Um, one of the things though that I did notice is that there is a seacock below the toilet where uh, when you pump overboard is where it goes to and that might be in the way for when I install the composting toilet. See it's actually just right under here so that may cause an issue and now with the luxury of time I might be able to wait till I have a haul out and then I'll be able to take that through hole completely out and close the hole so I have one less hole in the boat. And although this design of boat by the way uh, doesn't have lazarettes, uh, lockers basically underneath the bench seating of the cockpit, uh, this is one advantage though, um, they actually open up and so for me working on a stinky job like this it was uh, a lot nicer to have lots of ventilation uh, plus it actually allowed in a lot of light which made it a lot easier to work in. So pluses and minuses with everything.
Hey, feels like Christmas time. Uh, get these open. There we go. Read that. That. Lithium iron phosphate. Uh, 200 amp hour battery replacement. I've got two of them. They'll give me 412 amp hours. But with lithium, that'll give me a lot more usable power than it would with the lead acid that it's replacing. These two will replace the 18D battery that I do already have in there. And then this is a uh, battery monitor that includes a shunt. Uh, so I should get some uh, really good data on the capacity of the batteries and their health, as well as the information I'm getting from the uh, charge controllers. So um, thank you very much, SOK. Okay. Let's get these things uh, installed. Woo Today's the day that I'm working on my uh, battery installation. I've already put in uh, some extra solar panels at the back of the boat. I hooked up another charge controller. I'll be replacing the old charge controller with another one for the um, remainder of the install. I'll go over that once I'm uh, at that point. But for today, I'm going to be installing those two uh, lithium iron batteries, some LifePo 4 batteries. Uh, but first, I got to get the old one out, which is uh, down under the floor here. So on here I have two 8D batteries. This one over here is the starting battery, which I'm going to be keeping. And then this is the deep cycle battery that I'm going to be replacing with the two lithiums. Um, they'll fit in a little bit less space, so I've got to work out the uh, uh, how that's going to work. And then of course the wiring, because these ones with being two, I'm going to put them in parallel to maintain the 12 volt and then be able to connect that back up into here. Now the hard part of actually lifting that battery out of there. Oh boy. Oh my god, this thing is heavy. Oh, I think this thing was full of lead. Oh my god. Kim Marie doesn't see this. <sighs> Holy shit. As I'm connecting the batteries in parallel, I need to hook up the two positives and the two negatives of both batteries together to make one unit, one battery bank that'll still be 12 volt, but will double the amp hours. Um, I found some big 2.0 uh, gauge cable as spare on the boat so I'm making some uh, jumpers from that. Uh, there was another one that was already on the boat for a negative so that works out well and I just uh, just copied that. I had to use a pair of bolt cutters to actually get through that stuff but uh, I just have to crimp it and then put on the heat shrink and ready to get those connected. So I've got a shunt over here. This is what's actually going to uh, be connected to a monitor. And then I'm going to connect negative to negative and then positive to positive. So continuing on this morning with the uh, lithium battery upgrade as well as uh, uh, the solar panel upgrade. So there was 400 watts approximately of solar power already on the Dodger frame. And I've added another 400 watts on the stern. The 400 watts on the stern of the boat is being fed by the new uh, charge controller that I put here. Uh, a little EP Ever unit there. And that is going to charge and I'll be able to see and see the status of the battery here. So all of that I installed yesterday and is functioning just fine. So that's all good. But to connect the old solar, there was a small charge controller for the old solar unit unit. I'm going to change that around and add another unit because there is a little bit of a conundrum. The starter battery is still actually a lead acid battery and the way this system works when the engine is running, if the engine ever runs, um, 
that there is a system here in place where we have uh, the alternator feeds power into an isolator and the uh, isolator then uh, makes sure that the starter battery is full and then goes ahead and starts charging the house bank. And it's also got a, a voltage regulator here. Um, the problem is that the this system will not work with lithium. So I'm going to be installing this guy. So this unit I'll be able to connect solar to as well as the alternator and be able to function with both the lead acid starting battery and the solar power bank. So all of that should work just great. There's only four wires going into the unit. The hard part for me is to knowing what part of this system I no longer need. So that's my challenge for the day. So I just finished making the final connection for both sets of solar panels. Um, so the one controller here, um, turn a little light on. Um, you can see that we're getting uh, 11 amps from uh, the solar panels and 13 amps uh, is actually going towards the battery. The, the charge controller is changing voltage there. But you can see on this little guy, we're showing 28, 27, 28 amps. And that's because I've got two controllers so the other controller, the new one that I just put in, that guy, is also putting in uh, voltage as well. So I've got both sets of solar panels going. Uh, it makes for a redundant system, but now I can charge the panels either from the solar panels that are up there on the Dodger or the ones that I installed earlier on the back or when the engine is running through the alternator. So I should have uh, lots of power. Now to see if I can get these lithium batteries fully charged. Um, I've got uh, probably over 300 amp hours to, uh, to charge up, so that could take a while. Even at 30 amp, that would be 10 hours just to get them charged up. But uh, So in a few days, hopefully they'll be fully charged. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And please comment if you have any uh, questions or uh, any thoughts on what, uh, what I've been up to. I'll try to have more details, uh, like a whole overview once I'm completely done all my projects where I can go over the systems if anybody's really curious about the more uh, technical details of things. Um, but that's something I can certainly work on. In the meantime, time to get back to reading and uh, enjoying my last cookie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do make good cookies. <laughs>